I'm Justin Haggerty. Welcome to The Daily Night. Uh, we have to bring you a quick video uh, to talk about continued restrictions on the Tridentine Mass, the traditional Latin Mass, after the apostolic letter uh, by Pope Francis uh, Desidero Desideravi. Uh, today I'd like to start with a prayer uh, to Christ the King. In nomine Patria, Filio Spiritus Sancti. Amen. O Christ Jesus, I acknowledge thee to be the King of the universe. All that hath been made is created for thee. Exercise over me all thy sovereign rights. I hereby renew the promises of my baptism, renouncing Satan and all his works and pomps, and I engage myself to lead henceforth a truly Christian life. And in an especial manner do I undertake to bring about the triumphs of the rights of God and thy church. So far as in me lies, divine heart of Jesus, I offer thee my poor actions to obtain the acknowledgement by every heart of thy sacred kingly power. And such wise may the kingdom of thy peace be firmly established throughout all the earth. Amen. In nomine pace, fili spiritus sancti. Amen. So, breaking news uh, out of Chicago, the Archdiocese of Chicago, um, Cardinal Supich, Cardinal Archbishop Blaise Supich, um, has... It's not public, but it's expected to be made public today um, to completely uh, remove the Tridentine Mass out of the Archdiocese, and particularly to remove uh, Institute Christ the King Sovereign from the Archdiocese. Uh, so in the last couple weeks, and especially in the last couple days, uh, after the apostolic letter uh, Desidero Desideravi that that um, backs up Pope Francis's uh, Traditionis Custodis um, on restricting the traditional Latin Mass. Uh, that there have been bishops, modernist bishops, that have now stepped up to the plate here in the United States uh, to execute and remove, start removing um, the open accessibility. Uh, celebrating the traditional Latin Mass and then also attacking certain uh, societies of apostolic life um, from their archdiocese. And so uh, first uh, we saw there was a post by Michael Hitchborn from the uh, Lepanto Institute uh, that confirmed uh, what he had posted uh, from Savannah, Georgia, the, the, the Diocese of Savannah. Um, from the letter, after prayer and discernment, I wrote to the Congregation for Divine Worship. This is his writing. Um, now the Dicastery for Divine Worship and Discipline of the Sacrament in, in mid-April to request permission for specific parish churches in our diocese. In late May, I received a response from Rome containing the following. So he's quoting the letter. Uh, the Mass, according to Missa, Missa Romanum of 1962, may be celebrated at the Parish of Sacred Heart in Savannah on a weekly basis until May 20, 2023. So, he's giving an end date for that parish. The Mass, according to the Missal Romanum of 1962, may be celebrated at the parishes of Most Holy Trinity in Augusta, St. Joseph in Macon, and St. Anthony of Padua in Ray City on a monthly basis until May 20, 2023. Um, so, Again, throughout the diocese across middle Georgia, um, setting dates for parishes to terminate their, their celebration of the Latin Mass. Um, this is very, I haven't looked up, um, but it continues reading here, but this is very sad because uh, the first Latin Mass that my wife and I attended together uh, was at the Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist uh, in downtown Savannah. Uh, when we attended a low mass there, um, it wasn't my first Latin mass, um, but it was definitely, uh, it was our first, uh, together before we were married. And that means a lot to me, especially as an Irish Catholic, you know, being from up North, I, I was a little ignorant on the rich history of Irish immigrants and, and the Catholicism, the faith that they had brought, uh, from Ireland to the south and how large of an Irish Catholic community Savannah was. It was the second largest uh, community uh, outside of outside of Boston. Um, and and that, that uh, the positive of the faith stretched from there all the way to Atlanta. Uh, so to, to attack the traditional Latin Mass uh, in Savannah, it, it's definitely diabolical. 
no, no. I mean, it's like I said, it, it was one of the initial seeds of the faith here uh, in the United States. Uh, so it continues uh, in implementing the permissions granted by the Dicastery for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments. Please know that the Mass, according to the Missal Romanum of 1962, will no longer be celebrated at the Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist as of Sunday, August 7, 2022. So they're already cutting it down to only a few more Sundays uh, of celebrating the Mass. As of that date, the Mass will be celebrated at Sacred Heart Parish, so moving the parish, making it harder for people to attend. Um, and it gives the address uh, uh, and available at 1 p.m. on Sundays. I am confident that Sacred Heart Parish provides an appropriate and intimate place for worship, and the parish leadership will be attentive to the pastoral needs of those who attend the 1 p.m. Mass there. Uh, that was posted uh, two days ago by Michael, Michael Hicks, Hicks, born from um, the Lepanto Institute. Um, that before... Um, that news broke. Uh, so going back to the end of May, uh, the Diocese of, of St. Augustine. So here again, and I find this not, I mean, it's, it's not ironic. There's no coincidences, right? When you're dealing with the prayer natural. Um, but like Savannah, you have another initial deposit of the faith here in what is modern United States. The first mass celebrated in the continental United States happened at the Spanish landing in St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, and it is very coincidental, not coincidental, as I said, that that is another diocese that has recently been targeted. So at the end of May, uh, Lysite News uh, reported that a Florida bishop last week decreed that Traditionis Custodis be fully implemented in his diocese, thus ending the traditional Latin Mass in Jacksonville's Basilica and effectively banning most traditional rite sacraments. So that's another Latin Mass that I've attended, uh, early morning low Mass, um, but it's very, it, it has a good following um, there at downtown Jacksonville. Uh, under the sweeping restrictions on the traditional liturgy and sacraments announced by Bishop Felipe Estevez of the Diocese of St. Augustine in Florida on May 18th, the traditional Latin Mass of Jacksonville's Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, locally renowned, locally renowned for its beauty, will be axed when Traditionis Custodis takes full effect in the diocese on June 29th. Um, so that's already passed. The Basilica's pastor, Father Blair, announced the expiration of the traditional Latin Mass at his parish in the May 22nd Church Bulletin, explaining that it was due to the official denial of permission for the continuation of the traditional Latin Mass at the Basilica. In his diocese, Estevez has relegated the traditional Latin Mass in the diocese to two churches where it is already celebrated, St. Joseph's Parish in Jacksonville and St. Edward's Parish in, in Stark, where it, it is only celebrated on the third Sunday of the month. Estevez added that those who attend the traditional Latin Mass should receive appropriate catechesis regarding the celebration of the liturgy according to the liturgical norms of the Second Vatican Council. So saying that um, their catechesis, their knowledge of the faith, needs to be updated in the accordance and acceptance of the liturgy of the Second Vatican Council um, that led to Pope Paul VI's uh, Novus Ordo Missae. Uh, the bishop's instruction immediately following the point states that it is never proper for elements of the Missal Romanum of 1962 to be brought into Reformed liturgy promulgated by the Holy See following Vatican II. It's just not accepted. It's not proper. Uh, along with the announcement that the Basilica's Latin Masses would be canceled beginning at the end of June, Father Blair included in his Sunday bulletin an instruction from Do from the Diocese of St. Augustine, advising Catholics not to attend the Society of St. Pius X. Um, and that comes, we just did, we just had published that article um, straight from the SSBX uh, that uh, how they have grown. Um, and they would be the fifth largest religious congregation uh, if they became one. And uh, now with 707 priests. So again, this is acknowledgement that the Society is is expanding priests young priests from all over the world are are flocking to their seminaries to be educated 
uh, in the celebration of the Trajan Mass and, and to uh, protect and restore um, traditional and authentic Catholicism, right? And that is that worries this modernist side of the church, and it continues to express, hey, we're going to restrict the Latin Mass, we're going to attack the Latin Mass, and don't go to the SSPX. Um, the article from Lifeside News finished, it was announced Monday, so this goes back to May, that Bishop Estevez's retirement has been accepted by Pope Francis, and that our, an Arkansas priest, Father Eric, uh, Paul Muir will succeed him as the next bishop of the Diocese of St. Augustine. I don't know anything about this priest, uh, but expect that he'll continue um, the suppression of the of the Trinitine Mass. And it just it's 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 uh, ironic that this bishop Estevez announces his retirement retirement just after he he does his his act of. Um, continuing the the persecution of Jesus Christ, and, and that's exactly what this is. Um, this is a continued. This is a continuation uh, of the persecution on Calvary, um, and attacking the holy sacrifice of the Mass, most holy sacrifice of the Mass, the Holy Mass of the Ages, um, and traditional Catholicism. Uh, this is no different than continuing to nail our Lord and Savior on the cross. Um, and that's what these bad bishops are doing. Um, St. John Chrysostom uh, said that the, the road to hell is paved by the bones of bad bishops. These bishops are modernists. These bishops are not Catholic. Um, they reject the full Catholicity of the faith. Um, they reject the, the inherent uh, identities within the liturgy, the traditional liturgy, that made the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass Catholic. Any aspect of that Catholicity was removed, and they want to keep it removed. They want to suppress the Trinitine Mass, uh, make it harder for those to attend. Um, and that's exactly, it's, it's a continued persecution of Jesus Christ. It's a continued persecution of those who are members of the mystical body of our Lord. Um and so you see, again, the biggest news, uh, which, which was uh, published yesterday, hasn't made public, has been made public out of the Archdiocese, uh, Archdiocese of Chicago, but is it expected to do so? Uh, this post came from uh, Father Z's blog. It was published two days ago. Um, and this comes from, you know, Cardinal Supage, who is a, you know, a man that has, uh, in recent times, prohibited to the Trinitine Mass, Christmas, Easter. This is a man that has attempted to lock priests up, remove them from their parishes, and put them in mental hospitals um, for going against you know, homosexuality in the diocese. Um, that was well covered a couple of years ago. Um, by Church Millington and others, um, that 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 particular priest is still in hiding. Um, this is a man who, you know, two or three years ago, I think it was two years ago, um, when the USCCB was voting to determine what was the most important um, issue of the Catholic Church here in the United States, um, he fought to to say that it was not abortion. And that was a, an issue that goes all the way back to Roe v. Wade. Uh, he held a vote and, and tried to organize votes against saying that abortion was the number one issue. That, it, that to him, the main issue was immigration, migration, climate change, etc. All the, all the woke agendas are not about saving souls, not about saving and protecting the sanctity of life. Um, that, that that move by him... Uh, and one that received the most votes ever since Roe v. Wade to, to say that abortion was not the number one issue. Um, that led uh, Bishop Joseph Strickland, Tyler, Texas, to, to leave and to go outside and to pray, pray the rosary with those who are outside. Um, that's who this man is. Um, he is he's a modernist. He's not Catholic. Um, the title given to him, Cardinal Archbishop, is is um 
is a moot point uh, because he doesn't have the full deposit of the faith. Uh, he doesn't represent the church as a prince of the church. Uh, and he's been erroneously appointed to the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments, which we uh, heard during uh, during the letter uh, in, from the Bishop of Savannah uh, coining uh, the recommendations uh, of that office. So uh, it, you see where this is all coming from. Um, so the post uh, from Father Z's blog two days ago, which is expecting that this is going to be public today, uh, the post read that although this has not been announced officially, the news has already been leaked. Tomorrow, July 17th, so today, Sunday, the Arch Layman of Chicago, Cardinal Blaise Supich, will announce that the Institute Christ the King's Sovereign Priests will be shut down in Chicago effective August 1st. The ICKSB is a traditional Latin Mass community founded in 1990 that uses only the Roman Missal of 1962. It is one of the so-called Ecclesiae Dei communities, meaning that they have always been in full communion with the, with the Vatican II Church and are operating on the basis of the indult granted by Pope Paul, John Paul II. In the Apostolic Letter Ecclesiae Dei issued on July 2, 1988, their provincial headquarters for the United States are in Chicago under the watchful modern, modernist eye of Blaise Supich, end quote. Uh, the post continued on July 14th. The well-known blogging uh, Reverend John uh, Zulsdorf, a.k.a. Father Z, had already released a cryptic prayer request to avert a serious act of persecution, but he did not provide any specifics. On July 15th, David L. Gray was apparently the first one to reveal details as follows. Blaise Cardinal Supich is stripping the Institute Christ the King Sovereign of their ability to celebrate the Holy Mass and the little fiefdom where their U.S. base is headquartered, effective August 1st, 2022, so just at the end of the month. Uh, it will be announced at Sunday Mass at the Shrine of Christ the King Sovereign Priest on Woodlawn Ave in Chicago. Father John Lovell of the Coalition for Canceled Priests is to appear on the, on the David L. Gray Show Monday morning, July 18th, so tomorrow morning, to discuss it. Uh, since then, Father Z has updated his original prayer request post with details. Supich of Chicago has told the members of the Institute Christ of the King in Chicago that he is effectively shutting them down as of August 1st. This will be formally announced on July 17th, Sunday, at the Institute's church on the south side of Chicago. So expect it to be delivered by... Um, Either they will announce it or just expect that one of his henchmen will come and deliver uh, the address, right? Uh, no masses, nothing. 31st July is their last day to function. Um, and the post says that uh, expresses their, their apology that the Institute itself was not able to break the news uh, before going live or posting it on social media. Uh, so there you have it. Um, Expect this to continue. Expect that these bad modernists, these bishops, these wolves in sheep clothing will continue to suppress um, and extend the cancel culture that Archbishop Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano uh, clearly articulated that we discussed in length uh, in two videos ago. Uh, so you have, if, you, if you haven't watched that, please do. Uh, make sure you like this channel. Make sure you share our videos. Uh, we are starting to experience some some pushback. Um, YouTube tried to cancel one of our recent videos. It was a statement from Archbishop Vigano. Um, and then as of late, uh, Facebook has started to really hide our posts. We've, we've noticed that um, once we started the videos, that um, the the amount of likes and the 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 reach of our posts and articles is not getting as much attention as they used to and um so make sure you share them make sure you like subscribe to this channel um also go to our rumble we have the same videos on rumble subscribe to that channel as well uh get over to gab to getter to telegram um, to also get our news because, like I said, between Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, um, they definitely uh, hide uh, our posts in in your um, in your newsfeed and make it a lot harder to, to find. Uh, also, go to our website. 
then subscribe to our newsletter. It pops up right away when you first enter, uh, makes it really easy to, to get our, our next newsletter that we send out weekly of all our, our most recent articles as we cover U.S. news, world news, church news, updates on the counter-revolution, and insightful commentary uh, from our contributors, which we're growing. We're starting to get more contributors, which is great. Um, so definitely subscribe so that you can get that content. Um, and also we added a donate function. Even if it's just a dollar, uh, please donate. It adds, adds more um, capital to our operating funds so that we can continue to pay for our email newsletter, maybe afford more so we can do it more than just once a week. And also we're starting to raise funds for a uh, potential printed version, right? So that will all help us cover as we get more contributors to be able to cover more news because there's so much. There's so much, and, and especially from an investigative standpoint, uh, as you look into some of the things that are going around in the church and going on in society, uh, from Washington all the way to um, to Davos and and Brussels, uh, there's so much going on in the world uh, to usurp not only your sovereignty but also your faith, and it's very difficult to cover everything. So please donate. Um, like I said, if you have, please like this video, check the bell, and and. and uh, Please share to your family and friends. Um, I'd like to finish with a prayer. In nomine Patri, Filius Spiritus Sancti, Amen. A prayer to Saint Pope Pius X. O sainted Pope, faithful servant of your Lord, turn to us who are prostrated before you. Hard are the times in which we are living. Hard are the sacrifices which they demand from us. The spouse of Christ, entrusted formerly to your care, finds herself again in grave anguish. Her sons are threatened by innumerable dangers in soul and in body. The spirit of the world, like a roaring lion, goes about seeking whom it may devour. Not a few fall victim to it. You, who were here the great stimulator and guide of the people of God, help and intercede for us and for all those who profess themselves the followers of Christ. Obtain from the divine mercy the gift of lasting peace and obtain the return of the spirit of that feeling of true brotherhood which alone can lead men and nations back to the justice and concord that are desired by God. In nomine Patria, Filius Spiritus Sancti. Amen.